Living with nature and learning from it is something of a central narrative of this week's Echo Africa. It's also a message the indigenous sand people in South Africa want to pass on to everyone. The sand people recently opened up a new culture center called Kwatu. Kwatu means waterhole in the sand language. The sun have built a tremendous culture knowledge about nature and plant life. Visitors can find out about it in the new culture center. Echo Africa took a tour. Elant antelopes are shy creatures, but Matteo Sibongo knows how to get up close, slowly and steadily, and from downwind. His people, the sun, hunt the animals, but today he's only checking up on the herd. Elands have special significance for the sun. If you look at the structure of the animal itself, it's quite massive. It can provide a lot of meat, it can provide a lot of, at the same time, a blanket. The skin is used as a blanket, and there is also a fat. They use it for cooking, they use it for as a lotion, they use it for cleaning themselves. The, the, the traditional doctors, they use it also for another purposes. So this is why they say Eland is the most significant animal. Matthias Sibongo works as a guide at the Kwatu Sun Culture and Education Center in Zanfurtain near Cape Town. It's the first center dedicated to sun culture in South Africa. The sun are also known as Bushmen. The traditional hunters and gatherers are an indigenous people in Southern Africa. Their ancestors lived here when the Dutch reached these shores over 300 years ago. The rock art they left behind emphasizes the sun's deep connection to nature. The dominance of the European colonialist, massive land loss and assimilation have marginalized the group. Today, there are only about 150,000 people in Southern Africa who identify as sun. Working at the center, Matthew Sibongo's colleague Anunke Kadimo has learned to appreciate the beliefs and traditions of her people. Whether it's animals, it is plants, it is the way of living, try to learn so that you can keep your culture so that you can live with it one day, so that one day you can tell, I am from that community. Not far from the museum, a group makes its way across the shrubland the South Africans call a fine boss. It is out in nature that guide can best illustrate the sun's immense knowledge of medicinal plants like the kanka boss or cancer bush and wild mint. Matthew Sibongo explains how an infusion made from the leaves can be used as a remedy to treat a cold, the flu, and a host of other ailments. He's proud of the knowledge gathered by his ancestors. Much of it is now of great interest to the pharmaceuticals industry. Matthew Sibongo and his colleagues have been working for years to renaturalize the 900 hectare site, improving conditions for native medicinal plants like wild garlic and wild cannabis around Aquatu. Today, native animal species like zebras, springboks, and leopard tortoises graze on fields that in the 1990s were dominated by wheat monocultures. Mountains of dead would illustrate another renaturalization measure. Invasive species like the Port Jackson, a tree brought here from Australia, are being removed to reclaim the space for native plants. It will still take some time before this natural biosphere is back in balance. But Matteo Sibongo and his colleagues have already achieved a lot. His message about the environment is clear. Use it sustainable way. Keep it for the next uh, uh, generation. This is what we want to learn the outside world. Sustainability and environmental protection. This is a message that has been passed on by the sun for generations. <laughs>